Good morning, hello, and happy Wednesday to all of you. It is Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Bonnie Krebs, and I am so happy to be with all of you this morning. Uh, we are doing part three in the journal. So those of you who have been following along, and by the way, I love seeing the journals that you guys have been doing. I check the blog and look at all the things that you guys have posted, and I'm just so impressed. I am absolutely loving doing this project with you. So I'm excited to get to page three. Uh, we're going to do that on this tutorial, uh, but first I have a reveal for you. So we have two new sets that I'm going to reveal to you that are available right now on our website. Uh, one of them is this little alphabet set, and I'll show you once I flip the, the camera around how big these little alphabets really are. So they're, the letters are small, and you know they're going to work great in the journal. So I would have used them in the journal. It's just I got these after I made the prototype. So uh, I may find a place for them before we finish this project because it is uh, they're just a perfect size, and they'll be so fun to use. So. This little set is available, and of course the numbers are in, are, uh, in here too, so how cute would a little December 24 be uh, in your journal? I think that would be so cute. So available on the website right now, this uh, SKU is 5562, so you can check that out uh, on the Art Impressions website. And this little guy, uh, I can't tell you how much fun this is going to be. I'm going to show you, uh, once I flip the camera around, I'll show you a couple of pages in a journal I made <clears throat> using some of these little bugs. And they are so cute and so fun and really little. So they also come with dies. So you can use them for other things as well. So maybe you are a Copic designer and you just want to add a little bee or a butterfly or a ladybug. So there's ladybugs, butterflies, birds, and bees in this set. Uh, you can do that with your uh, with your Copic markers or your watercolor pencils, and you can just cut them out with the dies. So they're going to be used for watercolor, absolutely, but you can also use them for your other mediums too. That's why I included the dies, because um, I love that they can just sort of pop out on top of a flower or on a leaf. I think that's just going to be so cute. So I'm going to show that. I'm going to show you a couple of pages that I used them on. <clears throat> This is um, number 5561, so it is available. You guys, you always see it first here when it's available on our website. Uh, I get to give you the news. So it will be out in the newsletter tomorrow. That's the official announcement. So Wednesday morning, I get to be the one to break it to you guys and give you the good news about the new uh, reveal. So two sets, the Little Birds and Bugs set, 5561, and then um, the Journal Letter Die set. 5562. Five, so these are both available on our website right now as we speak, as we are on live. Um, they're available right now. So uh, I am going to say hi to a few of you before I flip the camera around. If I can find you on my iPad. Okay, here we go. Uh, and I see so many familiar uh, names on here. I just love hanging out and seeing my friends on here, you guys. This is just, it's so much fun. Uh, <clears throat> Linda says, yay for bugs. I know, you know, there's something about um, the bugs that are so cute. Not in your house, though. Nobody wants them in your house, but in a journal or on a card, they're just so cute. And these are really, really little. They're really little, so they're going to be really fun to tuck in, you know, all kinds of different places, unexpected places. Um, <clears throat> Carolyn Dunn is on. My friend Carolyn, she is on. Uh, Teresa says hello. Julie, hello. Uh, Georgia is on. Georgia is in the house. Georgia is such a talent. She has taught many, many thousands of people, and uh, we are very thankful to have her. <clears throat> Ruthann is in the house. Ruthann loves bugs too. Ruthann is a gardener. So Ruthann, she probably loves seeing those little ladybugs and stuff on her in her garden. Um, okay, you guys. Thank you for being on with me. Barbara, hi from Michigan. Nicole, hello, Nicole. She is on. Nancy from Texas. Wow, it's probably hot there. We've had some hot weather. And normally, you know, in Oregon, we don't we don't get the blistering heat like some of you do, but we've had some pretty hot days. Uh Michelle, Michelle from Australia is on at 2 a.m. probably there. <laughs> Hello, Michelle. Thanks for being with us. D is on. Hello to all of you. 
Um, okay, well, I will hop back on at the end and see if you guys have any questions about anything. We're gonna get to page three now of the journal. We're gonna put that together. We're gonna get it, act actually do the watercolor um, image images, and then we're gonna assemble it in our journal. So we're, we're getting there, you guys. We're getting to be halfway done. With this journal so it has just been so much fun so let me uh, switch my camera around and um, we will get started on our project okay let me just put this on here like this make sure that I'm in the screen and we are good to go okay so I want to show you I promised I would show you a sample of those little bugs and I'm going to love using them, you guys. You're going to be seeing a lot of them. And I, you know what? I really want to use them in the Christmas one, but I can't because there's, you know, literally no ladybugs in the snow. I mean, I, I, that I know of. And the bees are gone. So, uh, you know, we could, you could use one of the little um, birds and just use it as a little robin. That would be really cute. Uh, but we for sure are going to be using them in the future. So here's, let me show you. Here's the, here's the size Compared to the journal size, here's the size of the letters. And I, I just think they're perfect. Let me hold them up so you can actually see. I cut out Joy uh, with those dies, but you see they're really, they're really thin, but they're just the right size to put a little special note or a little message down at the bottom or like the, the December DEC 24. I just think that would be so cute. Uh, I'm going to find a way to incorporate them in here, um, into the journal, because like I said, they came after I had this all made. So um, I wasn't able to do that, but I'm going to find a way to incorporate them into the new one. Um, here then, is, here's the journal we're working on, by the way, but here's one that I just kind of put together. And uh, you can see this one. This is one that uh, was part of the set with the mailbox that we just did. But how cute is this little butterfly? So this is how tiny they are. They're really, really little. And of course, the butterflies can fold so they can look three-dimensional on here. Um, let me flip this page and see the little bee. So I've just kind of popped him out onto a little pot like that. And you can see how small they are compared to the images in the journal. So I just think that we're gonna have so much fun. We get into like some floral uh, themes and be able to use some of these um, or fall themes. So, okay, you guys, here we go. And we're gonna get started on our journal. So. <clears throat> here's what we're using. We're using this set right here. And let me show you the page. And by the way, the supplies are all on the blog. So if you want to know what we're going to be using in the next tutorial, so the next one will be page four or part four. Uh, if you want to know what supplies those are, you can go to the blog and at the very top, it'll say Bonnie's journal. And you can click on that and just keep scrolling down and you'll see um, the tutorials on there, and then you'll see the supply list. So Renee is so good about keeping up on that and making sure that you have all that information on there. So you'll always be able to see and be ahead of the game and see what we're going to be doing next. So we've we've done the cover. Uh, we've done page one, and we've done page two. And so now we are on to this page with the little snowman. We're going to do him and these little ornaments. And we're going to use the little frame die. So let me show you, um, in addition to the stamps, what uh, dies we're going to be using. So let me just kind of put this aside for now. And let me show you the stamp sets. So we're obviously going to be using this one. This is the Santa Workshop set. So this little guy right here, we're going to be using this one. This is 5543. Uh, the ornaments that come with the little church. And by the way, we're going to use this church too. We're going to put this little guy in that in the journal. So these little ornaments come in this set, and it's 5573. And then besides those two, there's not a lot, uh, you know, there's not a lot of other things we need. We're going to make that snowy tree in the background. So we're going to use this one. You could also use these two, any of these. Um, so we're going to use this little um, evergreen tree. And then uh, when we do the, um, so if you see on here, see these little fur boughs kind of coming out from the side? Uh, there, there's a couple that you can use. And if you don't have this set here, I'm, I'm using this one, one of these two. If you don't have these two, you can use this set. If you have this one, it's an older one. This is foliage set two. You can use this one. So, and, and if you don't have either of those, you could use a little, um, a little ivy or something like this. It, it honestly, it doesn't have to be this exact thing. 
So just something that looks, you know, a little fur bow or something that looks a little Christmassy, a little branch. Uh, you can use, you know, honestly, you know, any little foliage on there. So that's just what I used. But, you know, if you don't have that or you've got everything but that, just, just use something else that you have. Any little foliage with some little berries is going to actually be really cute. Even if you just have the um, the vine from the very first foliage set, you could stamp that on there, put some little red berries on, and nobody would even think anything of it. So um, let's go on. So here, this is what uh, the other thing that we're going to use are the little sentiments. So there's a little uh, banner right in the center. And I just use the uh, Let It Snow sentiment. But you could use any of these sentiments. This thing is just loaded with little sentiments that will go on a banner. So you could use um, you could use any of these little sentiments, and they're going to work great. So that is it. That's all that we need for this set. So let me tell you what dies we're going to be using. We don't need a ton. Uh, we need the page. So this is the page. This creates the page, and it has a score line on here. So this cuts out the page, and this scores the line. So you're going to fold that. Um, you're going to just fold that little page like this. And that's how we glue it in, like this. So if you're looking at the L like this, so you can see that little L on the side, it's going to fold in so that you see that, um, that edge in the front of your page. It's got to be showing in the front of your page. And the reason that it is, is because um, we start out that way because we have things that are three-dimensional. By the time we add frames and things in here, we need space uh, to put all those things. And that's why we have this lip on here. So we don't just glue the page in and not have space to add all the layers of things that we want to add in there. So we're going to come back to that. So that's the, that's the page that we're going to need. And then uh, the little decorative uh, paper that goes on the front of it, just a little contrasting color. Uh, I picked this banner. So in here, I've just got the straight banner on here, but I, I chose this one this time. This has a little fold and it actually, it folds just like this. So I thought, let's just mix it up a little bit and do a di little different banner like this one. You could also put one down here. That would be so cute. I think adding these little sentiments um, just adds a, a ton. So here's the score lines. So you can see where you can fold it. So it's just gonna cut it out and it's gonna score it. So super easy to use. So the little banner, the corner piece. This is the little corner, the little framed corner that we're gonna use. I should just keep this right here. <laughs> I should just keep this right here so I can show you. Here's the little corner piece. And this is really, um, this is great for a photo. So you could put this little corner in, tuck your little photo in, and then add the other corner to it once you've got your photo kind of positioned where you want it. So you could also do four corners if you want to, which would also be really cute. So I, we're just gonna use the corner and put the little Santa in here. But if you want to be able to remove it, you could. And uh, just don't glue this down to the page. Just glue it to your little corner and then you can remove it, take it out. Maybe you wanna put a little easel on it and have it you know, just stand up somewhere. So we've got this little corner that we're gonna be using. And then, um, the frame, so this little frame. And actually, when it's cut out, this is what it looks like. And this is the little frame that goes over the ornaments. Now, what I did on this one, I cut the center out. So it's the same frame. I just used an X-Acto knife and I just cut uh, this little center out. And you can you can do that. You can, you can make a, a, a frame with two openings. So you could take these out you know, this little post here and here, you know, or you can take this post out here and here. And so you can, or you can have a large one and two small ones. So think about that, you know, when you're using it, that uh, it doesn't have to be a four piece, you know, like this. It doesn't have to be a four panel. You could do a two or a three. Uh, yeah, you could do a two or you could do a three because you could have two small and one large under here. So there's lots of uses for it. And, um, you know, we're probably going to use it that way uh, in some way or another. So I'm, I'm kind of undecided. I really like the little window look. And so I'm kind of undecided whether I'll take those little panes out or not. I'll probably decide, you know, when I go to put this into my journal. Uh, but I think that's really cute to kind of match them too. So uh, to be determined, you guys, what, what we're doing on that, you know, and that's the fun thing. Even if you're doing these in assembly line, which is what I would do, uh, if I were making several of these, I would just, uh, you know, do the watercolor, do it like three times. And then, you know, as I go, 
And then I could just assemble them all together. You know, just cut two or three out at a time. And, you know, uh, you could put these together so fast, um, so quick. Okay, so let's get going on our watercolor. I'm going to uh, just zoom in a little bit so you can see uh, what we're doing here. So there is our little snowman. Um, what size? Okay, somebody says, uh, what size are the letters? So let me actually measure. Let me actually measure one, and then I can tell you. Um, there. Let's see. Let me get my ruler here, and I'll tell you exactly what size they are. So they're about a half inch. Uh, no, actually. Um, you know, they're about, one, two, three, four, seven sixteenths probably. So not quite, uh, not quite a half inch. They're really small. So can you see that on here? I can just, you know, if I hold the ruler up, you'll be able to just see compared to the ruler, you know, where that half inch mark is. You can see exactly um, how, oops. you can see exactly how big that, that is next to the ruler, just under a half inch. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, Kathy Andrews, my first time here. Looks like fun. Kathy, welcome. Oh, we're so happy you're here. And you know, we're working on journals and it's never too late to catch up. So we're on part three, but uh, you can still learn a ton about this technique just by being on here and all the videos are recorded. So they're, they're archived on Facebook and you can go back and catch up if you want to, or you can just watch it, enjoy, and maybe try this um, technique. It is um, such a fun one to do. And I, it looks like, oh, here we are. Here we're back. Look like we were paused for a second. Um, okay, here we go. Looks like we're back. Okay, Diane says, thanks for checking size. You are so welcome. Make sure you guys, if there's any questions, I, um, I'll i try to um, look over here and see um, if there's anything else you guys um, have questions about. Okay, so let's get going on the little Santa. I went ahead and stamped it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp these individually, but I went ahead and stamped this. It's the same way as we stamp everything. So we're using two colors just for, uh, for time's sake. We're using two colors, so we're going over the whole thing. When you're, when you're doing something that has snow or that is pure white, like the Santa, you can see that these areas here are pure white. His little um, cuffs, his, um, his beard, his mustache, his hair, uh, these things are all pure white. So that's the blue. So we're going to cover everything with this dark blue, and it's the, it's the 565, and then this is the 969. And then... Once we got it all covered with the blue, we're going to go over every area that's not pure white with the 969. And that just means we're just going to go over it like this, like the bird. That's not pure white. We're going to go over that, the, the little uh, mittens, the sleeve, you know, the shoulder, um, the belt, um, you know, this little mitten over here. But you get the idea. So you're going to go over it again, all of these areas um, the hat right here that's going to be red, the boots, you know, all of these areas that are not pure white. Those are going to have this, this brown on it. And then you're going to stamp it off. And, you know, depending on how wet your marker's off, you may have, be able to, you may have to stamp it off twice. But you want it light like this. This is, this is the goal right here is not to have it too dark. We don't want too many dark lines because we're trying to get that, um, <clears throat> that look of the image as a, as a real thing, not a stamped image that's just colored. So we want to see the dimensions. We want to see the contours and everything. We don't want it to look too harsh with too harsh of lines on here. So you can see, you know, when I hold it up, you can see those blue areas. See this little um, beard? It's just blue. This is all just blue. So there's no brown on that at all. Okay, so now <clears throat> I'm just going to grab my water over here. <clears throat> and my brush. So I'm using a little uh, watercolor brush like this one, number four. And I'm just dipping it into the water <clears throat> like this. And then we're going to start out by pulling the color out of the lines. 
And remember, you know, when we pull the color out, we're not tracing, we're never tracing anything. We're going next to it and we're pulling that color out next to it and letting that color bleed out. And it's gonna be really light. And see underneath here, you know, it's gonna be darker under here because this little, his little beard is kind of, you know, it's a contour. And all these white areas, you know, I'm gonna start with first. You know, the little hair up here, his little white eyebrows, his hat, all of this under here. <clears throat> his little furry coat. His little cuffs. And once you start doing this, you sort of get, um, starts looking three-dimensional. You sort of get a picture of where you're going and what this is gonna, what this is gonna look like once it's finished. His little eyebrows in there. Just putting in those, um, those shaded areas, especially at the bottoms. You know, remember the tops of any type of contour? Uh, the top is always going to have a highlight, so the, the color is going to be concentrated at the bottom. And then we'll, we can have a little bit in here. <clears throat> we can pull that color to this side. If we pull it to the side, that's going to lift this up. We're pulling it to the side because when, when we do that, when we pull it to the side, that brings it forward. If we pulled it to this side, it would drop it down and it would bring these panels forward. Kind of bringing that little belt forward. So now we can move on to the other colors. You know, you don't want a lot of water, just a little bit. Just, you know, dip your brush in there, just the tip, and then... Uh, pinch it off. See this little highlight here? There's a little uh, contour on the top of his boot. So we're going to see that. We're going to see that highlight. And it's also the top of the image. You know, anytime you have the top of an image, the top of the bird, the top of the hat, the, the little hand, uh, anywhere that you, the light would come directly down and hit, that's going to have a highlight. And you know, the more that you that you do these little creations, the more automatic those things are. They're really, you know, it sounds probably the first time that you hear it might sound a little complicated and you're like, what now? But the more that you play with these things, you'll the more that you'll see that uh, with what you're doing, how pulling that, pulling the color out, you know, and above and below the lines creates that dimension. And it just, it'll just become a habit. You'll just kind of automatically do it. See his little arm, this also is a contour. The highlight's gonna be up here. And probably have a little bit of a shadow under his beard, just like that. And see that also brings that forward by putting this color underneath. A little bird. You always wanna do everything in sections. So you would never want to drag your brush across a line. Everything is in sections. So I would never take my brush and try to, you know, uh, pull the color out of the lines, you know, across a line like that. Everything has to be separate. Okay, so he's starting to look like a real little Santa now. That looks good. So let's get some color now on his face. So I'm gonna take my palette now and I'm going to add some light pink, 850, this is an 850. This is like a, um, like a, a really light flesh tone. And then I'm gonna add a little red for his cheeks. And then I'm gonna get my tiny little brush. So if you have a one or a zero, you're gonna to wanna to grab that and really, really lightly brush this on. Um, you know, you can see where his face, I'm gonna just zoom in so you guys can see this. Um, oops, let me zoom in here. Uh, so you can see the face. Uh, 
you see where the little eyes are you and the little nose, this little triangle, even though this is tiny, you want to stay away from that area and you want to concentrate the color on the, on the outside, the cheeks. You could hit the end of the nose a little bit, but you want to concentrate the, the color on the cheeks because the area where his, his eyes are, that needs to be really, really light, even when it's tiny like this. Now this up here, you know, under his forehead, where his forehead is, that's okay. You can get that a little more color. But try to keep this area here really light. And then we can take a little bit of this, this red and just get his cheeks. Maybe just the tip of his nose. Like so. Now we've really kind of um, lost the eyes because we've put this color on here onto his face. And so we don't want to, we don't want to lose the eyes that this is the focal point. And you know, when you, um, you're creating these little characters, you know, they could be so elaborate and have all these little things on it, but where your eye goes first is to the face. It always does. So you want to see who that character is. You want to see, you know, what their expression is and what they're doing. So it's really important to have that character have life. And in order to have life, you have to keep it light. You have to keep it light. So I'm going to take my little twin tone now. And I'm going to put these little details back in. So first of all, I'm going to get his little mouth here. So, you know, it looks like he's saying ho, ho, ho. Just like that. And then I want to get his, um, his little eyes in here. And it's just a little tiny line like this. And then just a little shadow underneath his nose. And now we've sort of got his little expression back in there. And you know what? We might as well do this little bird too at the same time because we also want to see his little expression. Okay, so now let's move on. And since we've got some red on here, let's do some red. And let me just go back out here a little bit. And I'm going to go back to my number four brush. <clears throat> and just start putting some of this color on. Now, with color like red, it's probably going to take uh, two coats. But you're just going to brush this color on and try to leave just a bit of a highlight at the top of his little hat. Just a little bit. You're always going to be happier if you can leave just a little bit um, of white. And just brush it on. And then dip your brush again, just get a little more water on it and then pinch it off. You're always pinching it off. So it's, it's the same process always. Dip your brush and pinch it off and then stay in each section. You can see I left just a little bit of a, um, of a highlight on here on the top, a little bit of a highlight on the top of his shoulder. And now I'm gonna just go a little darker underneath his arm. Same here, stay in this little section. And we're kind of, kind of dividing his hat from his shoulder with a little white line. Keep those two areas separate so it doesn't look like they kind of blend into each other. And just, you know, break it down little section by section. You know, and if you want it darker, you can just go back in and add another pass, make another pass. But this is the fun part. Because there's no stress in this. You're just adding color. It's so fun. He's starting to come, come to life. And, you know, with the uh, brush... It's just, it's so much easier to color with a brush. You know, I started with watercolor and I've just never gone back. I've never looked back. And I just, I think, you know, for um, coloring, 
it's the easiest, it's, it's certainly the fastest way to color something. And for me, because I usually am in a rush, I need something, I need it quick. So for me, it's the fastest, easiest way to do it. And I don't, I don't need that many pens, really. And there's, uh, you know, you're not, not really fighting with um, marker lines. And you're getting a lot of shading uh, just with one pen, just by the amount of water that you're adding uh, to your color. So you can totally wash it out and make this red almost pink just by adding more water to it. And it's just kind of a, um, it's a really artsy, like loose look. And it's just, it's my favorite. If I'm coloring something, I am using a marker and a palette. I mean, just 99.9% .9 of the time. This is my go-to and what I grab, no, no matter what I'm coloring. And a lot of these same rules apply. You know, whether you're um, coloring a character or you're doing something, you know, in nature or you're coloring a pot and adding florals, a lot of the same rules apply. And that is where to put the shadows. You know, stay in each section. And then, you know, when it's a contour, you have to show that, um, that highlight. Okay, so we've got some red in here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little red to this little bird since, you know, I'm in the red. Add a little red chest to him. And let's put another color on. So I just, you know, I'm all about this blue with, with, uh, <laughs> with Christmas, red, green, and this blue. So, you know, you don't have to do, you don't have to do this exactly like me at all. If you have a different color, maybe you maybe you want to add some purple or maybe you want to add a really bright green. You know, it's totally up to you. See the highlight on top? It's just going to be a little lighter. Now, this is a contour here, so we're going to add just a tiny little bit of a highlight on the top of his little glove. And then let's do his, his little boots under here, each section, you know, they're going to, it's going to be darker on the bottom and then, you know, pinch your brush off and leave that little highlight. Just kind of drag that color over to the center and leave that little highlight on there. So you apply it where it's the darkest, pinch your brush off, and then drag it to the center so you can see that highlight. And this would be pretty dark under his little coat here. A little darker underneath here. So, you know, the more, the more times you go over it, the darker that it's going to be. So it's really easy to put a little contrasting shadow in there uh, just by making another pass and going over it. Okay, so now let's get some brown out and do his little belt. Or you could do gray. Gray would also be really cute. And just doing the same thing, just brushing this on. And this is pretty narrow and straight, so really don't have to worry too much about a highlight on here. Um, but you do definitely want to show something kind of in the center where his buckle is, just a little tiny bit. And then we're just gonna, we're gonna add a little darker um, line with the um, the twin tone when that's dry <clears throat> and some detail okay so now let's add the shadow to the little santa because <clears throat> we never leave anything just white always have to have a shadow on it otherwise it looks flat <clears throat> so i'm going to just take some of this 
and I'm just gonna go underneath this area and see how that just kind of pops that out. You know, this kind of down in here on the inside of his little sleeve. Under here like that. On the bottom, underneath his little, his little uh, curl. And then of course his, his beard. If you make a, you get kind of a weird line in there, you just wash it out like I just did. That was kind of a weird line I drew in. So you can just wash it out. I mean, sometimes you just get those. And then just a little bit under here where his little mustache is. And you see how that just kind of pops everything out and just makes it look a little more three-dimensional. Three can add a few more little lines in here. Like so. And then I'm gonna take my blue twin tone and I'm just gonna make that really dark inside his little cuff. And that will just really make that look three-dimensional. And I think I can just get a little bit in here also, just like that. And maybe just a dark line under here where we could really see that shadow and under his little boot here where that kind of folds over. And I forgot the little bird, so let's do him. Add a little brown to him. This little guy. And then keep the head, you know, always keep this area here light where his little eye is. And then back on his little wing. Make that just a little bit darker. Okay, we're getting there, you guys. <clears throat> now let's do the little tree in the background. So I'm going to stamp this and I don't really have to, I mean, I could, I could kind of cover this up. Maybe I will do that so that I don't get it onto this section. So I'm just gonna use some post-it tape so that I don't, you know, get anything over the top of that. Cause here's my, here's my border. This is, and by the way, uh, it's this size. So I just, you know, when I went to um, draw these squares, I just traced around this. And that's how I knew what size. And the same with these. The same with these on this side. I just traced around it and then I, I put a line down the middle. And that's how I knew what size. Okay, so let's um, ink this up. And we don't need the, we don't need the trunk. So I'm just gonna stamp this. Uh, just kind of in the background like this and maybe just up a little bit higher like that. And then I can come down and make it a little bigger. And maybe I just might want that even just a little bit bigger down here. So really, you're just basically putting in the texture. That's what you're doing because we're going to put snow on that and it's going to look like a little Christmas tree. So never stress out about this part. We're just getting this color in and we're just sort of creating this tree. And you can bring these branches over. So you can just keep dragging them over. And whichever tree you use, you can do it this way. So if you want it, if you want this to kind of look like it's behind uh, the Santa, just, you know, bring your line to the edge like that. If you want it to be in front, you can bring that green right over the top of his little coat. And just kind of spread this out and just create the shape of this tree. Basically, you're, you're sort of creating a triangle here. And then let's add uh, some sky in. 
and some snow. So we're just gonna do that with this dark blue and I'm just gonna brush it in like this. Now be careful that you don't get it into the red um, so it doesn't bleed out. I'm just gonna push it around. Make it, you know, so it's dark enough that you can see the snow. You know, we add the snow to it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit back in here. I kinda like this blotchy look. Um, if you, uh, you know, you never want to have straight strokes. I know I say this all the time, but I see a lot of people get in trouble with the sky. <clears throat> and that's because you don't have enough water you don't have enough water on your brush and you're making too many dry strokes. And if you make strokes, it's hard to control where the sky starts and stops and it ends up just taking over because you don't know where to stop that line. So if you just kind of put it on and just kind of push it around like this, you can kind of stop it wherever you want to. And then back here, you can create your ground um, sort of in reverse. So you can just do a little blue, a little blue line like this, and then you want to put the color above it. That's a really easy way to do a little snowy background. And then, you know, in front, uh, you could put a little shadow in like this. So it looks like, you know, maybe there's some little moonlight going on. And then in front of this too. And remember, we're gonna add we're gonna add snow to it. So we're gonna, you know, if you if you make a mistake with something and you think, oh, I did I got too much color on that, uh, the the snow is going to fix all of that. Okay. So let's just make sure we have everything here. You know, the bottom edge, you know, is always gonna be the darkest. See, like on these, always going to be the darkest here. And I feel like I got a little too much color on his little mustache. So let's just wash a little bit of that out. So it's not quite so harsh. That's better. Okay, I think he looks pretty cute, you guys. Let me take my, um, <clears throat> my twin tone. And let's just finish up the detail on this little belt here. So I'm just kind of drawing this line inside and making a couple of little, you know, details on here, like a little belt. And uh, I think that kind of pops it out a little bit more, a little more detail. Okay, I think he looks cute. Put a little heel on him. And this little bird, don't wanna lose his little beak either. Cute. Okay, so let's wait on the white. We're gonna do the white all together when we do the little ornaments too. So let's move on to those. And we're going to start at the top here and I've got my little ornaments put on blocks. So I can just put these into the little squares. This is like the easiest thing to do here. So, you know, you can kind of space them out however you want to. Um, what you want to do is uh, stamp them off. So for sure, we want to ink them and then stamp them off so that they're not too dark. So let's start with this guy. And I'm just going to ink it with my 969. It's pretty simple lines. and then stamp it off and you can see, you know, it's clear. So you'll be able to see exactly where to put it. And I think that looks pretty good right there. And let's do the next one. So let's do the two long ones. Stamp this one off and then stamp it in here like so. And then let's do our little ones. Stamp it off, and there, and one more, this little guy. Stamp 
and we'll stamp this one off. So we don't, you see how dark those lines are? That's just way too dark. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see anything outlined. Okay, so now let's get this out of the way. I have a big table, but you know, I'm, I'm just, it's always closing in on me. I know you guys can relate to that because that just, that's how it is with all of us when we're creating stuff. It just, everything closes in and you end up with about four inches of space to work in. Um, that is what always happens. And markers always roll. So they just tend to roll to whatever you're working on also. So, you know, the perils of crafting and stamping and creating, it's all worth it. Okay, so I'm pulling the color out of the lines just like we always do. We got contours galore here. So we've got highlights. Highlights. And stay in your section. All of these areas need to be showing a highlight. Oops, I don't want to get off the page here. And pretty dry brush. Okay, there we go. So now uh, I'm going to take my little um, my little um, evergreen bow here, and I'm just going to use my green, my 249, and I'm just going to ink about half of it, just about half of it on here, and just turn your um, turn your page so that's easy to stamp. You know, and it it doesn't you know it doesn't matter how you you put this in here, honestly. Maybe I'll just put this one up a little higher. Uh, maybe I'll drop this one down. This one up here. And so just about half with all of these, about what I'm doing. Maybe one more in here. And now I'm gonna add water to those, but just a tiny, tiny bit. And just kind of follow, uh, follow the lines here because we're just kind of, we're softening these lines, but we want to see that these are fur bows. So we don't want to lose these needles. And if you get too much water and you blend too much, um, you're going to kind of lose the shape and the detail of these little needles. So just a, just a tiny bit. And then the center. You could kind of concentrate the, cent the center, the color in the center. That's where it would be the darkest. These would kind of meet in the center. So um, that will work. <clears throat> and let's go back to our color here. I'm going to add some green now. And then we'll add some detail now to these, all these little guys. <clears throat> So let's start with this one over here. Let's just get this one green. So, you know, the dark where the color is the darkest, that's going to be on the outside. Where it's the darkest, pinch your brush off and pull it to the center. Just drag it over to the center and you've got a round image. And then you can go back you know, if you want that to be a little bit darker, you can go back and really hit it. And especially at the bottom. Because there's there's a highlight in the center, but the color is also darker on the bottom as because this is hanging like this. And that one's good. That one's good to go. So let's do this little one down here. And I've got just a little detail going on here. Patterns, just patterns. You know, you can just look at, you know, just look at some pictures of uh, some ornaments and just kind of mimic those. I think everything I do, I have at least one thing that has a stripe. And, you know, sometimes many things that have stripes. So that's always my go-to. And then, you know, I'm changing it up here with a diagonal stripe, you guys. And this one, because we've got white here, we want to have a bit of a shadow just on the side. So 
So that also gives us that look of the contour, even though uh, we've got a color on here. And let's go to this one. So this one is, um, it's red. So let's get some more red on, on the palette here. And it looks like I, I've got half of it solid. So half of it solid like this. You know, when you're, when you're coloring these in, make sure that you have a bend, you know, to your line so that you're not drawing a straight line across, you know, something that has a contour. And then I just made some stripes here, stripes again, but they're so cute. So again, you know, just kind of um, make sure that you're, you've got a curve here because that's gonna reinforce that, you know, idea that this is a contour. Okay, cute. And you know, we could do just another uh, little dark line, you know, on the sides just to show that you know, there's a shadow there. And then let's do this one. So the, the next one is a kind of a mix of colors. So I've got several colors going on here. So let's do the, let's do the red here. And then I've got red here. And you know, you can just absolutely do this however you you want. And then down here, another stripe. Like so. And let's add some more colors to it. So we've got green, red, blue, and a mix, a mix of color. And then I just, you know, kind of have a white stripe, you know, in between, so that the colors don't blend together too much. And then let's do a blue streak. And you can always uh, go over it with your uh, white paint. If you don't get your lines, you know, your white space is perfectly straight. Um, just go over it with your white paint and put it back in. I'm just gonna make this green just a little darker here. These little, you know, sometimes these little paintings are just the funnest to do just a little ornament like that, watercolored. It's just so cute. And I'm just gonna put in a little uh, brown here for these the little hangers. Just a little bit. Okay, so now let's get some sky in here. And uh, you could use either blue. Uh, you could use the light, the warm blue, or you could use the, um, the dark blue and do it just the same as you did um, the little Santa. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to fill the whole uh, square in. I mean, you can if you want to, but you know, with watercolor, it's, it's just the idea of things so a little, you know, area of blotchy blue gives you the impression that there's, you know, blue sky behind it. And so you don't have to fill in the whole thing to get that across. And you know, if it's too light or too dark, you could just go back in 
and either wash it out, you know, with some plain water on your brush, or you can add a little more color to it over the top. And you can see I'm being really careful not to touch my ornaments. I uh, don't want any of that color to bleed out into my sky. And you know, if you're not sure, just start out really light. Start out with a really light um, blue and then just keep adding to it. You can just kind of build um, onto the sky and add more color until it's darker. And I think I'm just gonna add a little shadow now in here. because we still have that white background, so we kind of need to see a little bit of a shadow here. Okay, that looks good. <clears throat> so now, uh, let's add our little red berries in. And I'm just gonna use my red, my A56 red, uh, the bullet tip. And this is, you know, what really makes it look festive is when you start adding these little details in. If you can get them in an area that's, you know, really light, that's better because they'll really pop. Okay. Now let's add our white. So the white really pops things out. Uh, once we get all of these things in, <clears throat> now we wanna add our snow. So let me move everything out of the way here and get out my snow. So this is my Bleed Proof White, Dr. P.H. Martin. Dr. P.H. Martin and I are best friends now, um, especially with this Bleed, bleed Proof White. Absolutely love it. It's my best friend, you guys. It totally is. Um, and I'm going to use my little brush this time. So this is my number one. And I'm going to get it wet. And I'm going to just, you know, get this paint, thin it down a little bit. So it's, it's pretty thick in here. It's pretty thick. So you just have to kind of add a tiny little bit of water. Just kind of dip your brush into the into the water and just kind of, you know, soften it up a little bit. And I wanted, you know, some thinner lines. So I didn't want to have, uh, you know, uh, too wide of lines on here. So let's just do the little details on here. And I think I, I had a little um, heart. that I put in like this, and then uh, my little snow in the background. Just doing that with my little brush, just, and you know, we might have some snow on the front of here too. can put a little detail in like this. And then um, this little guy, we could just kind of make polka dots. So, you know, you can just kind of, you know, add whatever texture, lines and stripes and everything else that you want on yours. Uh, I'm going to add some snow here to the tops of my uh, my little um, branches. But before I do that, I'm going to finish up with my little number one brush because I'm going to go back to my number four. So I'm going to do his little um, mittens with my small brush. And 
And if you, if you notice it's not going on smoothly, just get your brush, just get the tip wet again, and just go back in here and just thin it out just a little bit. So you can get it to just be a little thinner like that. And then let's get our snow in. And you know, if you think that you, you know, need to add a little more white here, maybe you got a little too much color, you can just do that with your white. So you never really have to worry if you think you've, you know, added too much color or, you know, anything like that. So you could just go right over the top of it. And it's actually kind of fun to do that anyway because it gives you a little more texture. You know, his little his little curl here, his little eyebrows. You know, I can just add a little more white to those and see how they just really pop out. Uh, his little beard. You know, and these little details. So you just do this with a really tiny brush. And if, like I said, if, if the paint doesn't move, if you can't, you know, get it to spread, just add a tiny little bit of water to it. It's pretty thick paint, um, but it's easy to, um, to thin out. You just need a little water. And then I just kind of brush it along the side to get my brush just a little flatter. And I'm gonna just, I'm sure, see some snow coming down um, all around. And if you miss that little highlight on his boot, you can put that back on too. Just so fun. It's just so fun. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch, switch brushes and I'm gonna go to my number four because I wanna get a, a little more paint on my, uh, my brush when I do the tree. So I've gotten some uh, water on my brush and now I'm just gonna kind of, um, you know, and there's different ways that you can do this. This is the easiest way, just kind of go around in a circle. Like the, you know, like the snow is just kind of sitting on the branch there's, you really can't mess it up. You really can't. You're just kind of putting this on. And you can look at pictures of how snow sits, you know, on an evergreen tree, and you could mimic that too. But you can also just do it in a circle like this. So it looks like it's just sitting on the branches. I mean, there's just nothing to it. It's so easy. And, you know, we can add a little snow on the ground you know, under the tree. And, you know, it adds texture. It really does. So it, it kind of, you know, it adds dimension to your project. And I, I think it just changes things. I, I think it just brings it to the next level and makes it look so much more uh, professional and realistic. You know, we don't want anyone to know. <laughs> we don't want anyone to know that these things are stamped. You know, we wanted to see these for what they are. You know, these little, just little paintings. And, you know, to just brighten it up with this white is just, it's just so much fun. So now that little tree is getting dry here, I'm just going to make one more coat. If you see any any color bleed through do you see how just a tiny little bit of the screen is bled through go back over it again just make another little put another little coat on it so it's bright white it's hard to stop actually. You know, once you start applying this, <laughs> this snow, it's kind of hard to stop. But I will stop. Okay, that looks pretty good. <clears throat> 
Now I'll show you while that's drying because we wanna come back in and do one more step with this, especially when there's a large area like this that's white. We wanna do one more step and that's put a little brush stroke of blue underneath it, the shadow. So again, if you have a white area, you have to have some sort of shadow underneath, you know, underneath it or um, around it so that you can see that it's white and it doesn't look flat. And it's just sort of will give you a little more dimension. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna go back and do that once that's dry. But I want to um, just put this aside for now and let's assemble our page. So I have one that's already done and cut like this. And this is going on the new page. So here's our journal. Here's what we've done so far. So we've got the cover, page one, page two, and then we waited to glue in the rest of page two until we had the back side done. So that's what we're doing. The little ornaments are gonna go on the back side of this, and then we're gonna have a new page for the Santa. So let me just put this to the side with the ornaments and the little banner. And let's focus on this one here. So here's our new page and it's gonna fold in like this. So let's add our contrasting color paper to it. And I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit now so you guys can see better. We're just gonna assemble this. So I'm gonna use some tape. Um, here's some tape. You can use glue. Now, when you're gluing your pages in, I mean, use your preferred adhesive for sure. Um, but when you're gluing your pages into your journal, I would recommend glue, uh, not tape. It's going to hold way better. Even your pockets, when you're putting your pockets in, um, use glue. And, the, you know, the fast drying glue, I mean, it's really good stuff. It really is. So it dries quickly. And then you'll find that your pages, you know, will really adhere but when you're gluing paper in like this, you know, it's pretty, it doesn't have to hold, you know, really strong. It doesn't have a lot of weight to hold. So I'm going to just pull this off now. One more. And then I'm just going to put it in the center of my page or as close to the center as I as I can get. That looks good. Now I've already cut this down. And like I said, when I when I put this uh, onto, drew my square, I just traced this little die. I just traced it and then I knew exactly what size. And so I cut it to fit right underneath this, this little window. So I'm just gonna glue this down now. And I've got my fine tip little glue here and so it doesn't you know it doesn't take much to glue this down so just a tiny little bit and you know it doesn't have a ton to hold so and and we're going to be using the corners too so it doesn't you know you don't have to get every little single area Okay, so I guess I decided to leave that. <laughs> I guess I decided to leave all four panes on here. So I think it's cute. I like it. Now, like I said, you could you could cut these out. That's how the original is. It's just the outside frame. Um, but you could cut these out if you want to, or you could leave them on like I just did. So now I'm going to glue this down to this page here. But I first, I want to put my little corners in. Now, you have to kind of decide if you want to be able to, to remove this or you want it to stay on here permanently. And I'm just going to keep mine on here permanently. So I'm just going to put a little glue uh, right onto the corner here. Just glue this on uh, like this. And then the same on the other corner. Just put a little glue in here. Just like that. And then I can glue my little tabs and then glue it to my journal page.
And just kind of, you know, wherever you think the, where it looks like it's in the center, you can kind of move it around. That's the nice thing about glue too, is you can kind of move it around a little bit and then get it stuck down. There we go. And I kind of like that it's not stuck down all the way. Um, it gives it a little more dimension. I mean, it makes it look a little more 3D, which, you know, I just absolutely love. I love things that just kind of pop out. So I think that's super cute. Okay, so now let's do the other page. And that is the back of this page. So we just did this one last time. And so we're going to flip it over. And we're going to do the back side now. So we're going to glue this, this little paper on here, contrasting paper, little snowflakes. And I'm going to use my tape again. And just put this on here. A little bit on the edge. I don't know what's fun or doing the watercolor projects or seeing it all put together in the book. I mean, probably that. Uh, because the little, the watercolors are so fun to do and they're, they're pretty small and all the projects are basic. So there's nothing, none of these projects are complex. And you'll find that the white paint hides a lot of mistakes. <laughs> you know, you can always go back through and add some more snow somewhere if you think you've, you've got too much ink somewhere or maybe you drop something or you have a big um, blob of something. Um, you can just go back and add some snow to it. Okay, so we've got this one in now. And we're going to do the same with this one. And I've got, you know, this line down the center. And it's going to cover, you know, the little frame's going to cover it. So I don't need to worry about um, erasing that. So I'm just going to glue this on now like this with my glue. Super simple. Oh, what's this here? Got a little bubble. So if you haven't used this glue, Art Glitter, this is the... <laughs> This is the best, and it has this tiny, tiny little um, nib. And I don't know where I've been all my life that I have not used this. I don't know how long it's been around, but I tend to get, you know, in my own world, and I'm always creating something, and so I don't know what's out there. And here this glue has been out there all this time, and I didn't know it, and you guys have probably had it forever. But it is the best. <laughs> it's so great. I love it. And a little bit goes a long way. So you don't need to have a ton. You don't need to have a ton. And it really, really holds. And looking at this, I forgot the snow on, on the little ornaments. So i got to go back and do that too. So I'll do that after I glue this in. So now I'm going to attach this um, just, you know, with my tape. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to use my glue because... Uh, I, it's a little heavy, and I want to make sure it sticks. So I'm just going to use my glue. And, you know, make sure that it's right side up. You know, I've done that too. Glued something in upside down. I'm sure you guys never have done that, but I sure have. So now I've got this stuck down. So cute. So cute. And the little banner. So I showed you this little banner. It's got the score line so you can see exactly where to um, where to fold, where to bend it. And then I just stamp let it snow on this little piece of, of um, white cardstock. So I'm going to glue this now to it. Onto here. You could stamp it and emboss it too. That would be really cute to use like a red banner and then maybe do some white lettering. That would be so cute. So now I'm going to have it pop up like this. So I'm going to glue down these little flaps, parts of the banner. Kind of get it in the center there. Whoops. There we go. How cute is that? 
That is so cute. I love it. I love it. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's glue that page in. Actually, let's do the um, let's do the snow. Let's do the snow on here, and then let's add the blue in here, so we can finish up this part, and then we'll we'll attach our pages. So I gotta get the stopper in my glue. Okay, so now. <clears throat> Let me get my brush back out and my white paint out uh, so we can finish this up. Because you know there's something missing. How did I miss this white on the ornaments here? So I'm just getting a little, dabbing a little bit of water onto my brush. And I'm just gonna add just a little snow onto the branches. Just like a little pile of snow collected, you know, on the top of these fur boughs. Okay, there we go. While that's drying, uh, I'm gonna just add a little blue to the bottom and I can just use my number one brush, my little brush. Pinch it off. And let me grab my, my palette. Get this out of the way. Okay, so now I'm gonna just grab my palette and take a little bit of this blue and just go under this little snowy area. And it's just going to just kind of pop this up. And just add a little more uh, dimension. There we go. You could add, you know, some little ornaments to this tree too. That would be really cute. Some little red ornaments, just red dots. That would be really cute. You could put another tree in the background. I mean, there's so many things that you guys could do. Um, we're just kind of touching the surface here. Scratching the surface. Is there anything else? I think... I think we've got everything here. Uh, be sure you sign these little, um, each of these little paintings, be sure you sign them because it's really important. This is all like um, original art and it should have your signature. You wouldn't have to sign all of these, but you could for sure sign the bottom. And I'm just gonna just hit these also. They look like they're dry. And this is what makes them look like mounds. You know, then they, they don't look flat. So they look like little mounds of white because um, we added that blue in there. Okay, let's set this aside. We're finished with that. So let's set this aside and let's get these pages now glued into our journal. So we're gonna start with this one. And this was the page two that we did before. So we're gonna glue, glue it in. It's gonna go right flush against the other page. So it's gonna go right in here just like that. So I'm gonna get my glue. And just get this on here. And like I said, you know, I. I would recommend glue when you're putting your pages in. Um, you know, adhesive tape will work for, you know, pretty much anything else, but when you're putting the glue in, or when you're putting your pages in, you want to for sure have um, glue that's gonna really hold. So you can kind of just, you know, butt it up next to that other page 
and just make sure that's in there secure. Like so, how cute. So now we've got one, two, and we've got three. And then next time, we'll finish this one up and glue in this page. So we'll have, we'll finish up three, uh, page three and finish up the back side of this one and then we'll glue this one in. So cute. I hope you guys are following along and give this a try. Let me show you what we'll be doing next time, what the next page will be. So we've finished this one now. So let's open up. We're gonna be in the center, you guys. I love the center. This is my favorite part of the whole journal is this little scene. I absolutely love this. And we're going to do this. We're gonna do this whole thing uh, in the next tutorial. <clears throat> and I think uh, what I'm going to be doing is um, starting next time. So it'll be in two weeks when we'll be doing this tutorial. Uh, I like to space these out so that those of you who are buying your sets as we go, you have time to get them ordered and get them to you so that you're ready to go with us. Um, and I, I need to, I want to give you a chance to do it on your own if you can't follow along with me on the live. So I space them out two weeks, but what I think I'm going to do so that we can finish by the end of September is uh, I'm going to record one. So the same time, the same day that we do the live on the Wednesday, there will also be a recorded one on YouTube. So you'll be able to follow that link, do the live with me, and then you'll be able to go to YouTube and you can do the tutorial for the next one. So we'll be doing this one live and then the next page we'll be doing, um, I'll record it. So we'll be able to get through things, get through these things way quicker. And then uh, my goal is to finish up by the end of September. And then we're going to start on a fall one, you guys. I am so excited <laughs> to start on the fall one. You're going to love it. It is so fun. We're going to for sure use the bees um, and the butterflies. So we're going to be able to get those bugs out. But I will give you more information on that as we go. And I'll show you the prototype as we go. But for now, we're going to finish this Christmas journal. It has been so fun. And we're going to do my favorite page in two weeks. So next Wednesday will be the uh, regular watercolor Wednesday. We'll do a really fun summer project. And then um, we'll go from there to the following week and we'll do the journal and we'll continue on. So let me just um, flip my camera back. And I can see you guys. Hello. Uh, I can see you guys and see if you have any questions or heart. Okay, Jill says she can hardly wait for fall. You guys, the fall journal is going to be so fun. Uh, you're, I can't wait to show it to you. It's just going to be so fun. Um, and Nicole says, I'm so in love with this wonderful, beautiful project. Thank you so much. I am loving it. I'm loving it doing it with you guys because it's it was really fun making the journal, but doing it together and then seeing your work. And you know what this also is doing? Like it's getting practice for you. So some of, sometimes it's just really hard to get into your craft room, get your stuff out and work on a project. But you'll find that when you start doing things like this and you're doing watercolor on a consistent basis, even if it's once a week or once every two weeks, you're going you're gonna to notice an improvement in your technique and it's going to be way more natural for you. And so, you know, this journal, that was kind of, you know, I wasn't even thinking about that, but I can see it and I can see the progression in your ability and your talent and how uh, proficient you're getting at this technique. So I am, I love that about it too. Uh, we are going to have the most, I have so many plans for this little book, you guys. I just, you know, I want to do a million things, but I, I obviously can't do a million things, but we for sure are going to go to fall. Uh, we're going to do a really fun floral one too, uh, next year. I mean, starting in January. So, you know, it's going to be really fun. And then in between I'll have, uh, you know, we'll do some more scenes. We'll do uh, more watercolor Wednesday, uh, basic projects. And then Kendra, of course, will be on. Uh, she'll be on next or tonight. She'll be on to back to basics tonight. So it was postponed one night. She's usually on Tuesdays at five o'clock Pacific time, but she will be on tonight at five o'clock. So be sure and watch out for her. Uh, the dies for next time. So we're going to be using this set. 
for the next time. And like I said, check out check out the, the blog because supplies will be listed as soon as I get it to Renee. <laughs> so I'll get this to her and then all of the um, supplies that you're gonna need, the sets that you're gonna need to continue on to the next page. Uh, will be on the blog so you'll be able to see that but this is um set five five four three and um or excuse me five five six seven this is the victorian house and barn set so this is the set that we're going to be using in the journal for the center page we're going to be using this one and then in addition to, for the dies the little pocket we're going to be using this little pocket die um a banner you know it doesn't matter which banner and then um, an edge, a decorative edge like this one. So there's not a lot that you're you're gonna need for this. We're gonna um, we're just gonna we're just gonna have so much fun with this scene. Uh, it makes me want it to snow, you know. And it makes me think: Is Christmas almost here? Because we can about start the countdown next month. You know, when we hit September, it's you know it's Christmas. So we'll be done with our journals, you guys. We'll be done ahead of time. So it'll be so fun. And then we'll start on the fall. <clears throat> so I'm going to say my goodbyes. Does anybody have any questions? Mary says, can you give us a little information on the fall? Wink, wink. Okay. Next tutorial. Next tutorial, I'll show, you, show it to you. I'll show you the journal. Next tutorial. So not this, not next Wednesday on Wednesday Live, unless I have it done. Uh, but the following, uh, when we're doing the journals, I'll show it to you so you can see. Um, Anybody else have another question? Lee, thanks, Bonnie. Another great time with you. So fun. It is. It is so much fun. I look forward to being with all of you so much. Thank you so much for being with me. Um, newbie here, looking forward to more watercolor practice. Kathy, yes. It is. It's amazing. It's a very simple, basic technique. And uh, if you're new, I would encourage you to follow Kendra on Back to Basics. So she's on Facebook, the Art Impressions Facebook page, just like I am. Uh, all of her tutorials are archived, so you can go back and see all of the Back to Basics with Kendra. They're very, very basic projects. She is an excellent instructor, especially for beginners, because she spends time uh, specifically talking about why we do the things that we do, and she really, really goes at a much slower pace than I do. So if you are a beginner, I would highly recommend that, and then uh, actually watch both. Watch me too on Wednesdays because um, it's all the same simple technique and we just break it down. We break it down so it's simple and it's not overwhelming and we know we can do it because we just follow the rules. Uh, yes, we will see more of Kimberly Ann. Yes, we will. She is going to be doing a, um, an actual class in Salem on the journal. So she will have more information on that. Uh, we're gonna get her back on here doing more lives. She's on Instagram. Uh, now doing her quick brush, so you'll be able to see on, see her on there. She is very talented. She's taught watercolor for years, and she is very talented and so much fun. If you've taken a class from her, you know what I'm talking about. She is so fun. So you're going to have an all-day uh, class with her. If you take that uh, journal class, it will be in Salem, so it'll be an in-person class. You're going to put an entire journal together. Um, on one Saturday. So she will have more information on that. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that and I will pass that along to her. Um, okay, everyone. Uh, yes, I lo love her quick brush. I know she's hilarious. She's so good. Uh, new stamps for the fall journal. Yes. Yes, there will be new stamps for the fall journal um, and new dies, you guys. New dies, you guys. That was just a little fall rhyme. Uh, yes, so we will be, uh, we're going to just have so much fun. I just, I can't wait to get on to the next thing. It's my, it's my impatient personality. I just want to do everything at once, but, um, we're going to finish this one first. So you guys, I will see you next Wednesday on uh, regular watercolor Wednesday with me. Uh, we're going to do a fun summer project and, um, it's also really fun. So remember with the tutorials, you know, with the journal, if you're not following along with the journal, you're not actually making it. These are great tips for cards. This little snowman on a card would be so cute. And even if you don't use the dies for a journal, you can use the dies to decorate your card too. So there's a lot of uses for it. I tried to, you know, Joel is, um, he's really, really good at visualizing. And so he and I work together really well. He, um, he is a detail person. 
And we tried to cram as many decorative little extra things into this set of dies as we could. So he is really, really good at that and he did a great job. So there's a lot, there's a lot in that die set um, that you'll be able to use. Um, okay, Georgia just posted, she's also doing a class on the journal September 17 in Dixon. So California, if you're in that area, uh, be sure to uh, message Georgia, you know, put that in here or message Georgia because she is a fabulous teacher. She has been teaching for years and years and years and just the funnest, uh, funnest person. So you will love a class with her. If you've never taken a class from her, you will love that. Um, okay, everyone, I will see my, say my goodbyes to you. I always hate to sign off, but I'm also don't want to be too long winded and I will see you next week on watercolor Wednesday. Check out the two new sets that are now available right now on our website, the little, um, alphabet set that will be perfect for journaling. And then, um, the little birds and the bugs, these guys, you guys, we're going to be using them in the fall journal for sure. Um, okay. I will sign off with that and uh, wish you a happy Wednesday and happy rest of your week. And I'll see you back next Wednesday on Watercolor Wednesday. Don't forget Kendra tonight at five, five o'clock Pacific time. She's got a really fun project for you. So stay tuned. Thanks so much, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all next week.